Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, MLB slate. It's kind of a weird slate in that despite it being a 10-game uh, slate, there are not that many great pitching options, and there's also a great deal of uncertainty with respect to who's actually pitching in some of these games, um, which could make things a little clearer. In other words, there are two pitchers who are on the COVID list who are threatening to come off the COVID list. And if they do, they might be two of the best pitchers on the slate. But at this point, I'm just not sure. So uh, just because of the timing of it, it might be a little bit, bit wonky to give a slate pre preview right now. But I could at least go through game by game, you know, and say what I think as of now and certain things to look for. And then as we get closer to lock, which I'll probably end up going live, There'll, there'll be quite a bit, I think, quite a bit more clarity at least. But it would be interesting is if all of these, uh, it would be interesting if all these, if those pitchers did not come back because then it would be a real, uh, a real mess to say the least. Okay. So let's first take a look at, the, at Yankees Baltimore. And first of all, as, as you might imagine, the Yankees are going to show up as a very, very strong uh, very strong stats. I mean, uh, they've been hitting the cover off the ball. Um, Spencer Watkins has been very, very, uh, very fishy to say the least. So the Yankees are going to be a, a, a top option. Um, I actually have them rated almost as the same as, as San Francisco in, uh, in Coors with probably half the ownership. So that would be the place that you would probably start, I think. Would be the Yankees. Uh, there are other there are other uh, you know there are other teams you can go to on a on a slate like this with a lot of you know with a lot of uh, with a lot of fishy pitchers out there, but um, the Yankees certainly stand out. Um, what about um, what we call it? What about Jamison Tyon? Tyon at 9,300 is, is a really, is really a tough ask uh, to say the least. Um, but, you know, as you'll see, I mean, there aren't a, a lot of pitchers that you could even count on to get even 15 points. So, um, I mean, right now I don't really have him as a top option, but he's certainly in the mix. Let's put it that way. Um, if, if the guys on the COVID list don't come back, I mean, he's certainly going to pop up as one of very few pitchers that you can, you know, you can go to if you want to know the truth. Um, so Italian, I'll just kind of hold off on right now. Um, and obviously let's start with the Yankees as the top option until we get on to some others. But Seattle against Toronto. Right now, I think my, uh, uh, Probably my favorite pitcher on the slate, given what I see now, is Jose Barrios. I, you know, listen, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to ignore um, the pricing here. Um, he does have some good games. He's coming off of two very poor games, to say the least. Is it possible he, he doesn't get owned because of it? I doubt it. I think he's still going to get some decent ownership because of those three games before and. You know, he's, he's uh, on a slate like this. You really don't, you really aren't asking for all that much. I mean, right now, I mean, I have him as the top of some very, very fishy options at pitching. So we're going to put him in for now, but, um, you know, hopefully some better stuff kind of opens up. Uh, as far as the hitting goes, I don't think I have um, – I don't think I have either of these stats particularly high. Uh, let me just confirm that between Seattle and Toronto. No, not really. Um, just look real quick. No, nah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not getting to either of these, the, these hitters. So for me, it's going to be Barrios and probably nothing else for this game. All right. Um, Houston against Boston. You have two pretty decent hitting teams and two kind of okay pitchers. Neither of these guys are projecting all that great. Um, but once again, I, 
I don't see where the great options are on the slate. So I think it's possible that either of these guys can end up being a good play. You know, or Ur- Kitty doesn't really strike out anybody, but at 7,200, m- maybe he's in play, you know, and this, this is unfortunately going to be the analysis for a lot of these pitchers. Oh, maybe he's in play. I mean, what do you want? Do you want to play Eovaldi at 9,800 against Houston? Probably not. Um, so as I said, very, very fishy stuff here. Uh, and with respect to hitting, I mean, not really. I think both these pitchers are ch- kind of good enough to kind of keep the other, the other team off my hitting list, um, but not good enough to have me actually play them. So that's that. All right, so this is interesting. So the White Sox against uh, KC. So – Here's here's the big the, the big uh, result. If Giolito is actually off of the COVID list, let's see what the most recent thing he could return Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, if he is off the COVID list and pitching and healthy, he's probably a lock on this slate. I mean, this this slate is really bad for pitching, and this is ex- and, and you price him at eighty five hundred. You got you got to watch this. A manager speak. I mean, I don't know what they're how they're treating COVID nowadays. Like if they're if they're going to say, okay, he's off the COVID list, he's going to limit him to eighty pitches. Okay, then, then I don't want to play him. But if he's just kind of off because of protocols, um, let me just see what it says. Is he actually sick? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Let me see. Oh, he did have symptoms. Um, so I don't know. I just don't know. But but if he's if he's good to go on this slate, he's I I think he's locked. That's my that's my initial opinion here. And then on the other side, I don't like Brady Singer. Even forty eight hundred is really cheap, but he hasn't really pitched any innings. I mean, so I don't know what they're doing with that. What I might consider is maybe the White Sox as as a stack here. Now again, this is probably going to be game two of a doubleheader. Just keep that in mind. So you're going to watch for. Different um, different lineups and things like that. So I would consider the White Sox probably a decent uh, decent pivot off of like the chalk, like the Yankees, the the the, the, the Giants, and, and stuff like that. Um, so I don't think that's pretty bad. But watch their lineup as far as that goes. So just to review, I do think Giolito is probably the best pitcher on the slate if he pitches, obviously. And I would consider the White Sox kind of an okay hitting option. Pittsburgh, Chicago. No, I mean, just no. Neither, neither pitcher really does it for me, and neither uh, stack really gets it there for me. We did well with the Cubs yesterday, but they're just not looking quite as good today, so we're probably going to avoid that. Atlanta, Milwaukee. Hauser at 9,500, no thanks. Davidson at 7,900, no thanks. Um, let me see if, if the hitting here kind of stands out at all. I guess Atlanta's okay. You know, I kind of equate them with something like the White Sox, maybe a little worse than the White Sox. So, yeah, I could see that. I could see playing Atlanta against Hauser a little bit. Or Milwaukee. Um, I'm really getting to Milwaukee too much today. Actually, I have them right really poorly for today for some reason. So, um, Tucker Davidson's a pretty strong debut there. Um, why wouldn't I play Milwaukee? This is really interesting. I mean, against, I mean, this guy gave up five runs in his last, last game. I mean, and I got all these righties, actually, I don't have all these righties from Milwaukee, but I don't get my proje- I honestly don't get my own projections here. Why is Milwaukee not rated higher? I don't I don't get it. So I'm gonna look at this again. Um, because if Milwaukee's facing this gas can, I mean I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna probably take a shot, right? That uh, makes sense to me. We'll 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 see how these numbers play out a little bit later. <sighs> but now you got the Angels and, and Texas, and you have Detmers against Tyler Hearn. Either of these guys do it for me. I mean, 
not really. I mean, all these guys are very similar. I mean, these guys like Talion, Detmer. Again, I guess Detmer's okay. I mean, even going back to that other play, like even uh, Brubaker. You know, I said no thanks for Brubaker, but compared to some of the other options, it's really not. He's really not that bad. You know, you really have, have Giolito, who's going to be like probably a 70% on lock if he, if he gets in. Um, and then all these guys just stink underneath as far as options go. Barrios, um, another guy we'll get to in a minute, uh, Brubaker, Talion, Detmers. So, you know what? Take a shot at who's going to be low owned out of this group. Check your check the ownership projections closer to lock and play, play, maybe I don't know, Giolito with, with the lowest owned of all these terrible options. Maybe that's an idea. Um, and Taylor Hearn, I'll just put right into that mix. I will say that the Angels for me uh, look to be a, a decent stack. Uh, excuse me, a decent stack. I have. Yeah, where do I have the Angels? I have the Angels right, right there. I mean, they're below the Yankees, but maybe ahead of the White Sox. I have them very pretty similar to maybe the Dodgers, which we'll get to in a minute. So Angels, Dodgers, these are these are we'll get to that, but 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 Angels I definitely feel is a is a good pivot off of Coors, good pivot off of the Yankees. And the reason why as I as I you know why it's tough to play them is is they're just kind of expensive, but maybe not so much anymore. I mean, you got Otani 5,900, you get Trout at only 5,500, Rendon 4,700. Maybe you can play these guys. So I think that's that's definitely a way to go. So San Francisco and Colorado, um, same deal. Um, these guys are all going to be really chalky for San Francisco against Chad Cool. I, I will, I, I will say, will say that he had a lights out game at home against two two games. His last two games at home, he was basically lights out. He pitched seven and a third at home. At, who pitches seven and a third at Coors and, and lives to tell about? It? You know, he gave up three runs, big deal. And against Philly, he shut them out. Are you kidding? Two hits through six innings at home against the Phillies when the Phillies were 800,000%. Wouldn't that be awesome if Colorado turned out there was some wicked, mad genius GM? that knew how to recruit pitchers just for Coors and that Chad cool for based on some advanced metric. We don't know about. is just an amazing Coors pitcher. I wonder. I, mean, I can't play him at nine K, but if he was 6,700 or something like that, I, I would try it. Such incredible leverage to off of San Francisco. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm off of San Francisco. I'm, I'm going to go for the, I'm going to go for the Chad Cool sneaky GM narrative, and that he's actually pretty good at Coors. Um, why can I get away with that? The only reason I can get away with that take is because I can say whatever I want about fading a team that's going to be a hundred million percent on, which is what San Francisco is going to be. You want to know why? Because they do rate to be one of the top plays on the slate, but they don't rate to be any better than the Yankees. And they're going to be rated. They're going to get higher ownership. They just are. Um, and so San Francisco is going to be a favorite for me. Uh, Colorado, the Colorado side. I think Colorado is very viable here. I mean, you have Alex Wood, who's you know who has a reputation. Alex Cobb who has a reputation for being pretty good, right? But I don't know. I, you know, Coors can uh, suck the life out of a lot of people. You know they. He does have back-to-back -back games where he's had 23 and 20 fantasy points, got a 27 down here or whatever. But I don't know. I, I think I prefer the Colorado side to San Francisco, given the ownership discount. I mean, the discount, given the hatchet, the hatch job on the ownership from, between San Francisco and Colorado. All right, so Minnesota and Oakland. This is, um, this is another one where the starting pitcher is up in the air. So you have Dylan Bundy, who is um, – let's take a quick look at his, his game log this year. Um, he had a look, – look, he had a bad game his last game. He gave up nine runs against his former team, which is pretty, pretty brutal. I mean, when, that, when you think about it. But he's, he's been pretty good, I mean, most of the year. 
you had a couple of good wins. You had a, you had a couple of last two haven't been good, but I don't know. He's, he's, he's always viable. So if he gets in, um, I think, you know what I think you might get, I think you might get kind of inflated ownership on him. Like, like people are looking at, they see Bundy and Giolito both kind of on the COVID list. And if they both come back, they both might get bumped. I was equally, but maybe Bundy's ownership might kind of, you know, be dragged along with the, with the Giolito ownership, you know, like the, the, the COVID reinstatement ownership. I don't know, maybe, because he doesn't really rate to be any better than all these other, all these other bad players. Um, so you got to play somebody. So I'll include him on the list, but if he gets owned, he is not going to be played by me. Um, and then you have Kepa Caprellian, who I mentioned earlier, and he's, he's in that mix too, you know, and I would certainly consider him a possible. So with him, uh, Bundy, uh, who do we go back to Hearn, um, uh, Barrios, I mean, all these guys, all these 75 to 8,000 8, guys who just kind of look crappy. Um, I think they're all very similar. So find the ownership discount and just grab it. That's what I would do. Um, Oakland, no, thank you. Um, Minnesota, I would put on, on, on you know, the, the, the tertiary list maybe. Um, below other teams I might not play, like, like Boston. Um, then again, Boston, maybe, maybe that's what you're supposed to do. Like if, Bar if Barrios somehow ends up being owned, he won't be. I just don't think he will. But if he does, then you can go play Boston. Maybe Atlanta. Yeah, I consider Atlanta similar to Minnesota. Uh, as far as rankings on the, on, on this slate. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and finally, Arizona against the Dodgers. You have Merrill Kelly, who, as you know, he's um, he has been good. He has been bad. He has been, you know, attack. You, know, you, can, you try to attack him. You try not to attack him. Everybody always tries to go after him. But, you know, he's got some good games. He's got a 32. He's got a 26. He's got a 21. Um, then he's got a couple of fair ones. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go crazy trying to attack him. However, uh, he is against the Dodgers. And, and the Dodgers are just, just continuing, you know, listen, maybe not in the last game or two, but the Dodgers are, have been, um, you know, they're always a team that, that looks really good. But their last two games, they only got, well, they lost – they won five to four, five to four, three to, all right. They haven't been as, as efficient, you know, in the last couple of games, but look, they still obviously have an incredible amount of bats. Um, where do the Dodgers rate for me in this mix? I have them below the Yankees, but, uh, but probably on par with the angels. That's what I would say. So I would put the Dodgers and angels together in that next tier, like probably below the Yankees. Um, and with respect to ownership, I think it's going to be pretty tame. Um, so I think the Dodgers are a very strong play. And I would go with – you can do whatever you want. I mean, play the righties, play the lefties. I, I just really play everybody um, and take a shot there. I would not – I would actually not be opposed to a couple of shares of Merrill Kelly, but he's just 9,400. It's just – I just can't do it. So uh, probably no pitching from this game either. So what do we have here on the slate? And the slates, the slates, kind of a kind of a crapshoot. But what is going to happen? I think is that Giolito is going to be announced in, and I think he is going to be the best play by a lot. Um, and I think he's going to get owned as a result. Can you fade that? See, here's the problem. I mean, like he's he's he's. Look, he doesn't have to be ready to go. He doesn't have to pitch all these innings, but there's not a lot of ceiling on this slate. You know, I think with all of these pitchers that are sort of in play, I think all of them, you're kind of begging for 15 points. Um, I mean, look, there are a couple that could, that could do it for you. Um, who, actually, now that I think about it. I guess Bundy could get 20. I mean, I guess Evaldi could get 20. But 9,800, what does that do for you? So that's the problem. I mean, Giolito is going to really stand out as a lock here. And, and so this is what you do. If you're going to play that, then pair him with, I would pair him with the lowest own of those crappy pitchers we talked about or crappy pitching options. That being Talion, Berrios, uh, Urcudi maybe, 
um, uh, Brew Baker. I'm not even putting Hauser on the list. Um, Hearn, Detmers. I wouldn't go for the Colorado game. Bundy, Caprillion, you know, those guys. So that's, that's probably what I would do. Um, and then as far as the hitting goes, as I mentioned, Dodgers, Yankees are going to – Yankees are probably the best. But then there's obviously San Francisco, but that ownership I'm just not going to do. And then there's Dodgers, Angels, and then after that I would say Colorado. So stay tuned. I'm going to be live at six and we're going to go through, we're going to have some, 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 some more clarity with respect to the pitching as we get there, but uh, that should do it for now.